Oh, a pure heart, Lord, that's what I long for. A heart that follows hard after thee. A pure heart, oh, Lord, that's what I long for. A heart that follows all after thee. Oh, heart that hides your word so that sin cannot come in. Oh, a heart that's undivided, one you rule and reign. Oh, a heart that beats compassion, one that pleases you, oh my Lord, sweet aroma of worship rising to your throne that rises to your throne. Amen. Sweet aroma of worship rising before his throne. This is about prayer, and this is today what I want to speak to you about just a little bit. We, our last study was about putting on the whole armor of God, but then it goes to one of the last pieces of armor. It's not just the shield of faith, but if you go down there just a little bit further, and we will, it talks about praying in the Spirit. Now listen, he says in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Talking about us. And this has been the whole theme of what we've been talking about for, for uh, this whole week, about being ready to stand before the Lord, to have a garments that are clean and white, fine linen, the righteousness of saints. So, our last first thing I talked to you about was being the importance of being born again, knowing the Holy Spirit, of knowing the Lord, amen? And not just being a church member, but being born of the Spirit of God. That's the first preparation you need to make just to get into the wedding, hallelujah, to be there in the heaven. You'll never get into heaven unless you're born again. The Bible says Jesus said to Nicodemus, you remember this story? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews, according to John chapter 3. I mean, I'm telling you what, he was as clean as a pin. And the Bible says a ruler of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night and knocked on his door. And he said, good master, or rabbi, we know that you've come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do, except it comes from God. You know what Jesus said? Marvel not, but I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Now that's one of the uh, one of the things that you have to be to be able to come into the kingdom of God. You can't even see the kingdom of God unless you're born again, beloved. Well, brother Martin, I've been a church member all these years. Good, I'm glad. Maybe keeps you out of some trouble. I don't smoke. That's good for your health. Amen. I don't cuss. That's good for your neighbors and your wife. Amen. But it won't get you to heaven. You must be born again. That's what Jesus said. And he said it three times in three verses. If you'll look in John chapter 3, starting in verse 5 and 3 and 7. Ye must be born again. He said, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again, beloved. So that's the first part of being part of the bride. That's the first part I gave you. The second part I gave you was about learning how to do right with the talents that God has given you. That we may one day when we stand as his bride, we have something to give him. Amen. Don't you want to give the Lord a crown? You know there's five crowns you can win. You can. Five of them. To lay down at his feet. He's worthy. God bless your heart. He's worthy. He created everything. He made you. He said even the hairs on your head are numbered. And the ones that fell off of your head, they're numbered too. Amen. He knows everything. But he says in this chapter right here, he says, listen. And we were finishing up in verses, uh, we were studying in verses chapter 7, right? Revelation chapter 7, and in verse uh, 19 and verse 7. And it said this, let's read it to you. Look what he said. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, 
for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the wife has made herself ready. Get ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the white linen is the righteousness for the saints. Amen. Well, for the saints is what he said, the righteousness of saints. Do you have the righteousness of God? Well, Lord, Lord, I'm working at it. I've been praying for it and trying. I'm fasting. Listen, that's not how you get that kind of righteousness. Amen. Now, in the Old Testament, they had a different kind of faith, and they did have righteousness. But in the New Testament, this righteousness is a gift of God, and it's in Christ. The Bible says, Jesus Christ is made into you righteousness. And if you have righteousness, that means you have the same nature God has. The Bible tells us in 2 uh, Peter chapter 1, somewhere in verse 4, it says we have a divine nature, that divine nature of God. Amen. So we have a different nature. Now, he also tells us to get ready because the marriage of the Lamb is coming. In verse 9, he says, And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Are you ready for the marriage supper? Are you ready to step off and meet the Lord? Now, the last time I talked to you in lesson four or five, lesson five, I told you about uh, putting on the whole armor of God, but I had to stop with the shield of faith because that's where we ended. But let's look at it again. He said, above all, not just the helmet of salvation, not just your breastplate of righteousness, and gird about your loins with the truth, your feet are shod or clothed or, how you say, uh, shod means put on like you put on your shoes or sandals with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. And then he says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, you fill your heart, your mind, your life, your being with the word of God. Jesus said, if you abide in me, if you abide in Christ, walk in the spirit, not after the flesh. Abide in me, and my words, my words abide. They live in here, amen? What words are living in you right now? What, what of God's words living in you? So, well, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Well, that's good. I'm not fussing at you. Thank God you got something in there. But you, you need more than just a crumb. You need more than just a little bit. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusteth in him. Listen, put this Word in your heart, in your mind, in your life, in your ears, but get it down in your spirit, okay? And then he says this. He says, after the helm of salvation, the sword of the spirit, he said the shield of faith. But then he says this in verses 18 of Ephesians chapter 6. Pray, amen? And you can't pray if you don't have the whole armor on. Well, brother, that's the first time I ever heard anybody say that. Well, I didn't know it for a long time, and I started reading this in its context. It didn't stop at 17. There's a colon there. It says, which is the word of God, talking about the sword of the Spirit. But then he said, praying. Didn't even stop. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, not in your brain, not in your prayer book that you got from somebody. Or not the way Dr. So-and-so prays or Sister So-and-so prays, but learn how to speak to God. First, you have to learn how to get into his presence, amen? How do you get into his presence? Well, I'll tell you, Brother Martin, that's what I do. I fast, and then I crawl on my knees. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. You don't come into his presence physically. You come in, or, I mean, you don't come in there dirty with your clothes dirty and, and you know, I, I never go to the Lord until I brush my teeth and, and comb my hair with a little bit I got left, you know, and uh, look for sale, wash my face. Yeah, I'll, I, you wouldn't go before a king that way, would you? All messed up. Well, he's a king. He's our king. Amen. He's a king of kings and a lord of glory. And he wants you to come before him with a clean heart. How do you do that? Through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Father, Zagate. I come to you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you said in Hebrews that I could come through the blood into the holiest of holies by faith and have boldness. You said to have boldness and encouragement, amen. And Father, I come to you 
I even call them Abba, which means daddy. Sometimes I call them daddy. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in my own righteousness. Oh, no, 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 no. Not in my own works, or not because I've been a good boy, not because I read the Bible and prayed. I come to you in not only Jesus' name, but I come to you in his perfect righteousness, his perfect faith, his perfect obedience, the obedience of Jesus Christ, his perfect sacrifice. You remember when the Lord Jesus was baptized, and as he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove. And there was a voice out of heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. So I come before the Father, well pleasing because I'm coming in Jesus' name. See, I'm in him, and he's in me, just like he's in you. Well, how do you know that, Brother Marty? You can't pray without the armor. My helmet is protected. How can you cut through? We just read it about the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And we read about the, the principalities, powers, of uh, this rulers of the darkness of this earth, the spirit that now uh, of wickedness in high places. We're talking about a sphere that you've got to cut through when you pray. That's why the old Pentecostals used to say, they get down and they'd pray and say, and they'd pray and pray, and all of a sudden they'd, they'd get the joy of the Lord in their heart. And they look at it and say, I prayed through, amen. What does it mean to pray through? It means you get into God's presence, hallelujah. And sometimes it takes some time, especially if there's all kinds of enemies. You remember when Daniel prayed, and he says he prayed to God. He earnestly he prayed. And the angel uh, Gabriel came, or Michael finally came. You remember Michael came? And he says, well, I tried to get to you for 21 days. I've been trying to get to you, battling to get to you. And if you'll pray in a fervent, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And when you pray with the armor of God on, amen, to come before the Lord Jesus Christ, clothed with his armor, clothed in his righteousness through the blood, bless your heart, God will hear you, and you'll get prayers answered like you could never believe before, amen. But look what he says. Praying always in all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Not just in your brain. Some people pray the same prayer every time. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. You don't pray to Jesus anyhow. You pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Oh, God. I come to you this morning, God. And Lord God, you know I love you, God. And you all love you, God. If my boy come to me and said that, I think I would. I don't think I'd slap him. I'd tell him, sit down. Amen. Daddy, I come to you this morning, Daddy. And Daddy, I come to you this morning, Daddy. And Jesus. And and Daddy, I want you to know, Daddy, I love you, Daddy. How come you say his name? You, you know what that means? You don't have confidence that you're in his presence. You're trying to feel something. Amen. I'm talking about faith and getting your prayers answered and getting ready to step out into eternity with the Lord with some clean garments. Learn to pray in the Spirit. Amen. God bless your heart this morning. Look what he says. And you know when you do that, and watching thereunto with all perseverance, whereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Wow. Did you know that I, you can pray for me? There's been people prayed for me. I was one day, I went to the bank on Matt to get some money. I, my wife had such a need, and we did. And uh, I put my card in there, and it came back insufficient funds. I had no money. I'll never forget it. I didn't have a penny in there. I was walking down this, what we had called the canal, Dumbrovica, near Izvoro, a park near Bucharest, in Bucharest. And I was just crying. I said, Lord, how would you call me to go to Romania? I can't speak the language. This was years ago. I, can't, I didn't know how to pray and get received from the Lord back then because I had people helping me all the time. And when they all cut me off and I had to learn how to pray, my money ran out. I had to learn how to receive from the Lord. And he wants you to receive from him. He wants you to know he's your source. Amen. And so I got home and I was just a crying and caring. I said, Lord, how could you do that to me? I can't. What do you want me to do? Lord, I can't speak the language. I can't work over here. I had a little bit of money and I uh, used it all up, invested it in the lives and the ministry. And so I told the Lord. I got home and I went in my little prayer closet and, and I started praying. And I had a little room upstairs and, and my wife knocked on the door and I said, I'm praying. And, 
Yeah, but you're not going to. I said, I said, I'm in here trying to pray. I kind of opened the door like, I'm trying to pray. She said, it's a telephone call. I said, it is? She says, yeah. She said, it's from America. Now I listened to it. It was my sister. She said, Tommy, per- Tommy Faircloth was just praying. And I knew the place he prayed. He showed me one day. Up in, his, up in the attic where he had a place he prayed. He said, Tommy Cor- Faircloth was praying. He said, the Lord just told him to send you $1,000. And I just put it in the bank. And Brother Martin, brother, you have $1,000 in the bank. Right now, you can go get it out. Man, I was so happy. You know why? Because that brother heard from God. And that's why he said, pray with all supplication. How can you pray for a brother if you're not in the spirit of God? How can you come before the throne of grace if you don't have the armor of God on? It's impossible, amen? You can do all that stuff and beat the chairs and scream and holler and and think you've got a prayer going through, but if it ain't in the spirit of God, it's worthless. You're wasting your time, God's time, and probably your neighbor's time too, amen? So learn to pray in the spirit. So what does all of that mean, Brother Martin? Well, look what it says. And for me, that utterance may give, be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. It's all about Christ. In him, through him, with him, by him, amen, in Christ. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow.